Today I decided to give you guys a ranking of the Power Rangers movies. This more or less is a series of films based on the popular TV show of the same name. The movies have been pretty much sporadically released. There were two in the 90s and one in the late 2010s. And they're pretty much all entertaining. They're fun kids movies, well at least two of them are. And I do enjoy most of them. I'm not the biggest fan of the TV show, although I did watch the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TV show back in the... Well, I watched it in the 2000s, but it came out in the 90s. And I do enjoy the series overall. It's essentially an Americanized version of a Japanese show. But they just use the footage of the Japanese show and in scenes with American actors to make like a hodgepodge kind of show. Although these movies are a little bit different because none of them use Japanese footage and they're completely American productions, which makes them unique compared to the TV show. So without further ado, I figure I'd give you guys my ranking from worst to best. Coming in third place is 1997's Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. The only film in the entire franchise to actually be canon to the TV show this film sees the Rangers trying to stop a villain named Divatox, who wants to summon a monster called Malagor so she can rule the Earth, or something along those lines. This is not a very memorable film, and though it is canon to the TV show, this film essentially was a bridge between Power Rangers Zeo, which was the second Power Rangers series, and Power Rangers Turbo, the third Power Rangers series. This film acts as a bridge between those two series, and you see the Rangers in this movie getting their turbo powers and losing their Zeo powers. If you're not a fan of the TV show, you'll pretty much be confused. And even though I'm a fan of the original series and some of its sequel series, even I think this film's a bit lackluster. You only get about maybe five minutes of Power Rangers in the whole movie. It's mostly them out of their costumes. I think the Cars gimmick was kind of lame, and I think overall the... Visual effects are just kind of meh throughout the whole film. I will give them this, though. It's the only Power Rangers movie to feature a Zord fight with men in suits and miniature models, as opposed to CGI animation, but even that can't save this movie. A middling film that I do recommend to Power Rangers fans and really no one else. Coming in at number two is 1995's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. This film is kind of interesting. What it essentially did was take an arc from the third season of Power Rangers and more or less just remake it in movie form. So it's not exactly canon to the TV show. It's basically an adaptation of an arc from the TV show. It's definitely the most 90s out of these three movies. And it is pretty faithful to the show. But much like Turbo, we get very little Power Rangers in this movie. And unfortunately, the acting is kind of silly. It's it's a kid's movie, you know. But as an adult, you might get something out of it if you grew up with the show. But if you're not a fan, it probably won't do much for you. There's nothing wrong with the film. I do think it's a relatively fun family entertainment kind of movie. And if you're curious, it is available on Blu-ray now. So if you have kids, they might get a kick out of it. But ultimately, I think it's just a little lackluster. It's not really anything special there's not much power rangers in it the zords are completely cgi this time around and they look bad the film features the villain ivan ooze and he essentially tries to rule the world and destroy the power rangers as well as zordon it's up to the rangers to get new powers and regain their old powers as well to defeat ivan ooze and save the world it's a fun family movie and one that I do recommend for Power Rangers fans. But everyone else might want to skip this one. Coming in at number one, Saban's Power Rangers. Released in 2017, this is a more contemporary version of the original show, basically, just in movie form. It shows the five Rangers who you know and love, but not really. While you have Jason, Zack, Trini, Kimberly, and Billy, their personalities don't really match the personalities of the TV show, with the exception of maybe Billy. Billy still is kind of like the science whiz, smart kid. They mentioned that he's on the spectrum, which so I guess you could say he has mild autism. And that's kind of unique. I think that I like how they handled that. This time, though, they did race swap Trini, Zach, and Billy. Whereas Trini was Asian, the Yellow Ranger in the show, they made Zack, the Black Ranger, Asian, I guess because they didn't want a black guy to be in the black suit, I don't know. And they made Billy, 
Black, who is the Blue Ranger, and Trini, like I said, who before was Asian, is now, I believe, some kind of Spanish. It's fine that they changed their races, but I don't really see the problem with having a black guy in the black suit. But that's just how they decided to go. I guess they didn't really want to hurt anyone's sensibilities, but it is what it is, I suppose. The whole cast still does a really good job, and I do think that the action is pretty hard-hitting this time around. The problem with this film, though, just like the other two, is there's not a whole lot of action. This film sees the villain Rita Repulsa, who was also in the TV show, played by a different actress, of course. This time we're played by Elizabeth Banks. She tries to resurrect Goldar, who was like a giant golden monster in this movie, whereas he was just like an ape man in the TV show. She's going to use her powers as well as his might to try to take over Angel Grove and I guess eventually the world. In this film, they kind of change it up to where she used to be the Green Ranger, which I think is kind of interesting. And Zordon used to be the Red Ranger, which is also kind of interesting. And all in all, the story's pretty good. The drama with the teens is kind of interesting. I don't usually care for teen drama. Brian Cranston this time around plays Zordon. He's a good choice. And the teens are played by, you know, new up-and-coming actors. Like I said, I don't really care for teen drama that much, but I think it's handled very realistically here. The kids all have their own set of problems. Zach's mother is sick. Trini is a lesbian and her parents don't really accept her. Kimberly's a bitch. There's just no two ways about it. Billy is a autistic and because of that is kind of an outcast and not treated properly. And Zach's kind of a bad boy who's trying to find his way in this world. All in all, I do like their characters for the most part. But it is a bummer that they kind of made Kimberly an asshole. Kimberly was my favorite Power Rangers from the TV show, but here she just does some really messed up stuff to her friend and then tries to act like the victim, and I don't really care for that. I think they really ruined her character, and it doesn't ruin the whole movie, but it is a real bummer that it made her such an unlikable, well, ass. That's the best way I could describe her. All in all, though, the film is fun, it's entertaining. It does need more Power Rangers action, and you only really see them at the end of the movie, much like the other two Power Rangers movies. I don't know what it is, but these films are afraid to show Power Rangers. But all in all, this one does have the best action, the best acting, the best story, and is the best theatrical release that we've had so far. A good movie that I do recommend, just for your expectations, if you're a Kimberly fan. All in all, a good film. Well, that's my ranking. I thank you all for watching. I was going to do a Saw ranking, but unfortunately, I still have to watch two of those movies before I can give out my ranking. we will probably have that video sometime in the next week or two. But until then, I figured I'd give you guys this to hold you over. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. Leave your list down below if you'd like. And peace out.